All right, welcome back to MGM. Uh, my name is Jimmy. Today we're going to talk about supplementing your Warhammer terrain or just about any other miniatures game you play. I am, of course, talking about 3D printing, something that I knew absolutely nothing about just a few years ago and to how I have become extremely proficient with it today. I'm gonna to show you specifically how I have achieved building a lot of my boards and just made the game much more immersive. Now this will all be done for a reasonable cost and I wanna go ahead and get this out of the way that this video is not sponsored by anyone. I have not been sent anything for free. Now, I don't want this video to be seen as a dump on Games Workshop or any other company. I'm well aware that they make their own terrain lines, and again, this is just simply a way to supplement. I actually own an original just about everything, but in fact, because I've had my 3D printer, I have actually spent way more money than I would have on miniatures and other things as I continue to bring games to life. Many of the files are available for free on Thingiverse and have been there for, gosh, probably five years or more. And that's been plenty of time for the Banhammer to come through and take care of those, but they are obviously still there. So I see them for what they are, which is just comparable and compatible terrain to use in our war games. The purpose of making this video is to help you, the like-minded war gamer, maybe find a solution that will help you build the board of your dreams at an affordable cost and just overall make your games more immersive. So let's talk about the first thing that you have to do, which is to buy a 3D printer. And there's two types to choose from, really. There's a PLA, which I feel like is better suited for terrain, as you do see the layer lines with that. And there's also resin, which you've heard probably a ton about. That is more for miniatures. There are The layer lines are a lot more difficult to see in those. And the quality of the resin printers is just simply amazing. There's a ton of channels that are doing resin printing, so I highly suggest just throwing it in on YouTube and checking some of those out. For me, I wanted to focus more on terrain versus miniatures, and that is the reason that I went with an FDM printer. Flashback to 2020 in the midst of COVID when I was starting my channel, Necromunda specifically was very appealing to me, and I played some other war games and, and things like that that I wanted to make a channel about and things, but I started with the Dark Uprising box set for Necromunda. You can see some of those old videos on my channel of just how things started, how basic things were at the time. And let's be honest, they still pretty are basic. I, I film in a closet for God's sakes. But the point is we have come a long way and a lot of that has been the terrain and I get a ton of comments on just how the boards look overall. And you know, after buying Dark Uprising, that was a $300 set if I recall. I wanted to start to get more terrain and I wanted the tiles. And this is specifically back to 2020, the tiles were pretty hard to come by. And if you played Necromunda at that time and if you wanted tiles, then you knew that the struggle was real because as soon as they would pop up on the Games Workshop website, they would be snatched up very quickly and then you would find them on eBay or other retail sites for two times the price. It was at that time I decided to go ahead and buy uh, an FDM printer, and I think I spent around $200 for an Ender 3 V2, which they have made several upgrades since then. I felt like for me, after doing my research, that this was a good entry-level printer and something to kind of help me learn the ropes and get started and I'm still using it to this day. Now, setting up the printer is pretty easy. If you can assemble a model, you can certainly assemble a 3D printer. It comes to you in a big box, there's some pieces you put together, and away you go. I do recommend making a few changes, and you will probably see this after your first few prints, but if you get an older printer like I did, then there's no auto-leveling system. You have to do everything manually. Now, one of the biggest frustrations that I had in the early days was leveling the bed. And, you know, again, a lot of these printers nowadays come with an auto leveling system, but for these, you have to turn knobs and place your nozzle in all four corners, turning the knob with a piece of paper underneath, getting it just right. I did struggle doing that in the early days, and I decided to replace the stock springs with some that I found on Amazon after doing some research. They were about five bucks, and I also got some nozzles and some other things with it, although I'm still practically using the same nozzle that I have for the last three years. The springs are very easy to replace. Just simply twist the knob, replace the spring, and twist the knob back. And ever since I have put these new springs on, it has made my bed leveling experience much easier. Now, I can't stress this enough that 3D printers require a lot of patience 
and you have to be ready for some failed prints and ready to do a little bit of research and a little bit of troubleshooting. I really can't stress that enough. It's really hard to just find something that's perfect out of the box. Although nowadays, I think a lot of companies are making them that way. So I purchased a printer. I've now got my printer set up and I started to work on my first piece of terrain. And since the tiles were not available at the time, I wanted to print some Necromunda tiles. So I went and found some comparable and compatible tiles for free on Thingiverse. And each one of these tiles measures six by six inches. So you guessed it, it takes four of them to make an official Zone Mortalis style tile. These tiles are a little thinner than the original Zone Mortalis style tiles, but they also have some really good pop-ups in the center and along where the walls go, and it will really help your walls and columns snap into place firmly and hold very well. So when you find something that you like, an example would be this tile that I'm going to print. We simply download that file and I load that up into Cura and I just simply use the stock settings for the most part. And you can really get as deep down into this rabbit hole as you want to go on what makes the settings absolutely ideal. But I use a 15% infill on most of my prints and just whatever the stock settings are for just your medium quality settings. This tile costs about 94 cents to make and takes about seven and a half hours of printing on the printing speed that I have, which is just the stock speed. Again, it is something where lots of patience is required, but at the time I was probably printing anywhere from two to three of these a day, sometimes even more if I left it on overnight. In order to make a 3x3 Necromunda board, you'll need 36 of these. It takes about 270 hours of printing and a cost of about $34. It's not as big of a deal now as it was, as the tiles are more readily available. But three years ago, when I wanted to make some Necromunda content, it was certainly worth the time and the effort on my part. Now when the print is complete, you simply scrape that off and you are ready to prime and paint that up and start your next project. Now one of the things that I forgot to mention in the initial setup process, after you've leveled your bed, you want to go through and take a glue stick and give the bed a thorough coating of that glue stick. And what this will do, you want to heat the bed first, I find that this helps, but this glue is going to help your print adhere to the surface. If you're working on something bigger, like the hab levels that you have seen in my videos, because the footprint of those are so big, sometimes you can experience a little bit of lift from the build plate. And that's just because the ends are applying, you know, that pressure to the middle to lift that up. Well, if you apply the glue stick, it tends to adhere much better and you get a much more higher quality print. So after 240 hours of printing these tiles, I was ready to take my next step. And how else can I bring my board to life? And I needed more columns, more walls, more stairs, uh, greebles, barrels, you know, just a lot of different things, containers. And you can find all of this stuff for free on Thingiverse. The compatible columns I downloaded cost about 66 cents a piece. They take about five and a half hours each to print. And then also some of the double walls, those take around six and a half hours to print and it cost about 80 cents per piece. From there, I went on to printing other things such as stairs and even barrels, scatter terrain, hab levels. There's been a lot of things that I have found both free and purchased that I've used to supplement my official terrain. So if you've ever wondered how I printed or how I created a lot of these Necromunda boards that you see, a lot of it was achieved through official sets and then supplemented with 3D printing. If you'd like any suggestions on how I painted this terrain, if I can actually figure out how to do this, I'll try to put a link either in the description or on the video so you can check that out. I've also made a video on the benefits of modular versus static terrain, and all of my uh, terrain is modular, although with a 3D printer, I am now printing off a lot of pieces and gluing those together. So I am starting to do some tiles to an extent, not full-blown tiles, but I am gluing some things together just to make setup a little easier. Now, some other things that I have 3D printed are, you take a look at bolt action. There's some of these Normandy buildings. And these things are pretty awesome. Also free download on Thingiverse. They are multi-level and they just look fantastic. I've also printed an entire cityscape with a Kickstarter that I backed through Saucerman Studios. 
You've seen those in a few battle reports for Necromunda. I've even found some really cool moisture vaporizers or whatever they've called for Star Wars Legion, and I've printed out a few of those to include in our upcoming Legion reports. It really doesn't matter what game you're playing, whether it be Necromunda or Kill Team, what kind of board you want, from Sector Imperialis looking terrain to Zone Mortalis style looking terrain, Mechanicus, or if you're looking for something for bolt action, Flames of War, Infinity, you know, you name it. There's just tons of good terrain for free on Thingiverse, and then there's also paid options from these creators that are amazing as well. If you have the time and the patience, this is a hobby kind of within a hobby, and there certainly is a learning curve, but I can't recommend 3D printing enough, as it is a great cost-affordable way to really build out your tables. There's also a lot of community support for 3D printing, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube channels from different creators. If you have any problems or issues, you simply make a quick post there, and someone, the community I've found has always been really good at helping you out. So this has been a look at how I have created and continue to create the board of my dreams using 3D printing as a supplemental tool. Hopefully you have found something in here that has helped you as well. And maybe that answer is to maybe say, hey, look, 3D printing is not for me. If I've helped you out that way, then that's cool too. If you happen to like this video, be sure that you leave a like. If you disliked it, you can certainly leave a dislike as well. Regardless, I really appreciate you being here. I would also like to give a big thank you to the Coffee Supporters Club. Your names are on the screen now. It's by no means necessary. And if you've watched the video this far, you've done more than enough to support my channel. So thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Take care.